you get to see the beer butchers go against the grain and do something that's a cardinal sin. We're going to break out a tomahawk steak from a carcass that was just butchered 24 hours ago. So one day dry age. We've never done it. We always let our cattle hang as a carcass a minimum of 12 to 14 days. The reason we do that is this environment that we're in is closely controlled or as best we control it. It stays about 35 degrees, 80% humidity. Um, so this carcass will have some of the moisture evaporate out. And then the big thing is you'll get that enzymatic activity that breaks down the muscle fibers and makes it more tender. So you're gonna get a much, much, much better um, eating experience from aged beef. Industry practice, uh, 50 years ago, every beef carcass went through this same process. It changed when vacuum sealing came about. Now, the common practice is to go ahead and break this down, fabricate it at um, 24 hour mark, and vacuum seal the primals, and then that's called wet aging. So 90% of the meat that you buy in the grocery store has gone through the, that process. Slaughtered, fabricated within 24 hours, wet aged um, and during shipment essentially as a primal. Um, there's one more danger to that and that's that any pathogens that could be on the carcass could go in that package. Um, it's gonna keep, be kept chilled, but if any of the um, juices sort of leach out into the corners of the package and warm up, that pathogen, those pathogens can um, stay alive. So that's where you see some of the higher E. coli risk. Not the case with dry aging, that's why it's an industry practice. But we wanna find out what's the difference between a one day dry aged steak, our normal two week dry aged steak, and then a 42 day dry aged steak. That's when those buttery caramel tones really come in. So today you get to see us break out a one day dry aged steak, take a two week dry aged steak, and a 42 day dry aged steak, cut them, compare them beside each other. We're gonna cook them. Let's get started. The pieces de restaurants are 30 Excuse me, 42 day dry aged. Oh, it's unlocked already. 42 day dry aged rib section is coming out of the cabinet. This is in our dry ager cabinet. And the great thing about this is the climate is perfect. It's 34.5 degrees, 80% relative humidity my camera <laughs> it'll smack you right in the mouth <laughs> 42 day aged rib section for tomahawks two week aged rib section for tomahawks i'm gonna get the one day aged not really aged but this animal's as scott mentioned has only been hanging one day so we're gonna go ahead and get this broke out fifth and sixth rib and we'll pull the section, rib section, long bone out of this. And then we'll go through each one and cut some tomahawks. You've definitely seen us do this a few times we got to start by prepping this that starts with getting this skirt steak out of here and then we'll cut the plate off this section That's the length that we want our long bones on the tomahawk, so that's why I trimmed that piece off. Now we want to cut this 
portion of the vertebrae off of here. And the key here is that you want to break those bones so that I can take my, my big knife and go down in between each, each bone. We need to do that on each one of these sections. So there's the one day. Now let's move to the two week. Just gonna square these bones up a little bit. We're gonna do the same thing here. That's the most challenging part, using this bandsaw at that angle to get that vertebrae cut off of there. One day, two week, 42 day. I still gotta trim this one a little bit on the bandsaw. This thing is like rock hard. You gotta be real careful when you do this. kind of like giving a haircut you can always go back and take off more but once you take off too much you have a receding hairline you didn't want so you can see this one uh, the long bones have been prepped so we've already done the trimming in between each bone and that's because that's how we present it in our dry ager so obviously I have to do that to these two so I'm just gonna move these out of my way for a second over onto the bandsaw and then I'm gonna start with the one day hang time rib section. And we start, I just use my meat hook and we get underneath that membrane. We pull that membrane off these ribs. So trimming out this section is gonna be a lot easier than the one that's been 42 day aged just because it's not so, the whole thing's not so stiff. So after we get that membrane pulled off there, remove our thin feather bones here. So just go all the way down the back. It's been a little while since we've done a tomahawk video for YouTube. So hopefully you get to enjoy seeing this process done. So now what we want to do is right here is the eye of that rib eye. So we want to start, and this is that the bottom end of that shoulder blade bone. So we want to come just above where that vert that last vertebrae stops right there. And we want to come all the way across this whole rib section to see where I wound up over here. And then after we get our line drawn across there, we just take, we just remove this excess fat off the tops of these bones. And then we'll go down later, go down through later and we'll trim up each one of these bones. But the first step is to get that big chunk of fat off of there. Now what we want to do is take this fat cap off. And you can see this, this whole thing's kind of sloppy. It just hasn't had its chance to, to set up and age. But one big reason why they fabricate these animals, you can see um, so quick on a commercial level is because they're a lot easier to fabricate when they're floppy like this. Um, it's just the longer they age, the, the harder they are to to cut. So we'll just go down through that patty whack off there. And then once 
once we get that done. Now you can see this is where I had that 42 day aged rib section prepped. I already had all of this portion done where I had in between the bones trimmed out. But we'll just go down through each bone. All right, so there it's all trimmed up to the portion where I'm gonna cut in each individual steak, and then I'm gonna go back through and clean those bones out. And you can see the trimmings pile that I got off of there. And so what we do um, with the 42 day aged is we leave that fat cap on there while it's aging because it's like a, a piece of cheese. That fat cap is gonna protect that inner meat as it ages. So you can see this portion that I trimmed off right here, when we aged this one, we left all of that on there. There's the one day. I'm gonna get each one prepped and then I'll get it cut into steaks. So now let's go to the two week. First thing I wanna do is get these are food grade USDA stamps, but I want to get some of these trimmed off there. Let's get my table all blue. So we'll just get these trimmed off. And now I can get started. Okay, same process that we did on the one day. And you're gonna notice that when I work on this one, since it's hung two weeks already, is that it's gonna be even more set up than the previous one. I prefer to have it just a little bit more set up than what this one was. I think it's a, you know, although that one may be easier to just to kinda to cut on, I, I like the firmness a little bit better. Keeps the, the cuts more precise. You'll see when we cut these into the individual steaks. Same process again here. We're gonna go just above that ribeye. And we're gonna come all the way across to this side, as you can see. Now we'll just take this fat off the backs of these bones. And you can see that the trim that I'm taking off of these, it's not near as floppy as the last one. So now we're going to go for that fat cap. Pull the yellow cord out of there. Now we'll go down through each bone, clean the meat out in between each bone. First thing I do is I score that meat. You can probably see my knife coming through on this side. So I go down through and I score that meat at the bottom. That way when I run my knife along these bones, it's already scored at the bottom and those pieces pretty much just come right out. And there is the second one prep for steaks. On to the 42 day aged. This one's gonna be crispy. This is where you have to be careful you don't cut yourself because it's extremely, these pieces are extremely hard. It's like this whole thing's just, it's like a rock. But the end result on a section like this is 
absolutely amazing. So it's worth the, the wait time and it's worth the, the extra labor that it takes to, to cut them. So once we get that done, obviously as mentioned, this portion's already been removed. So now I'm just gonna go in with that fat cap. Take that off there and you can see, you're gonna see that when I get this fat cap off of there, that meat on the inside is just a nice cherry red because it's been protected by this fat cap while it sat in that dryer cabinet. Boy. Oh, that smells so good. It has that caramely, nutty smell that dry aged beef has. That yellow cord off of there. There's our third and final rib section. All ready to be cut into steaks. We're saving the best for last. You're gonna have to wait to see this one cut. That one's gonna be incredible. So we're gonna go 42 day aged, two week, two week aged, but we're gonna start with this one day and I gotta stop calling it aged cause it's not aged. It's just one day hang. Um, so the first thing I'm gonna do is just, now that I, I broke this down the way I did so that there's a space in between each rib so I can just go down through and I can start cutting these nice, beautiful, thick beef tomahawk chops. So once I get these cut into individual steaks, I'll go down through each one and clean these bones. So I use my 10 inch Victorinox to cut down in between each bone for the steaks. And then I'm gonna switch over to my eight inch to uh, just to clean these bones up. And then of course I use my six inch the whole time to do the, the prepping of these sections. So we'll just go down through, get the scraps off these bones. You wanna get these scraps off here, get them cleaned up because when during the cooking process, if you don't, they'll kinda discolor and they won't look super appealing. So plus these will look a lot better in the package. Just finishing up the last one day, but you can see these just, they haven't had a chance to, to set up at all. You can see how wiggly, wiggly they are. So that's the first row of tomahawks. And those are the one day aged. Now let's get started. We're just gonna create a little pile of our trimmings over here. Switch back to the 10 inch. And we're gonna repeat this process we're going to go down through and we're going to cut these. This, these are the two week. Nice thick beauties once again. Once we get them cut, switch over to the eight inch and we'll just start trimming some bones. Just finishing up the last of the two week aged. So you can see the difference. Um, the color's different, the firmness is different. Look at the difference between those two. So I'm just, I'm just holding them, but you can see this one's pretty, pretty floppy. So there we have the one day, the two week. Now it's on to these dandies. If I was gonna choose one, that I was gonna cook, I know which one it was, would be. It would be one of these. There is um, obviously more loss on these because I need to trim this whole end off of here. You can see how discolored that is. Um, it even goes into the meat there a little bit more. So I'm just gonna trim it till I get down to that nice cherry red. And I'm gonna do the same thing on this side, taking this first end off of here to where we get down 
to that nice red color. Boy, these are gorgeous. Got the marbling in there. And then we just start by going down through each bone again. Beauty. What do you think, Spencer? It looks good. Would you like to eat one of those? I know which one of these three I'd <laughs> Well, it's your lucky day because you get to try some of it as long as we remember to feed you. <laughs> I'll just just I'll put, remind us. Put the hand out. <laughs> yeah, remind us while we're filming. We actually have a customer coming in for some of these today because he saw them in our dry ager cabinet and requested some. So he's going to be in for a treat. Look at those beauties. Not as much prep to do on these because I did, as mentioned, have them, I did have them previously trimmed. And there you have it. Last but not least, those 42 day aged tomahawks. Spencer and I already decided that if we were gonna come over to this stash and pick one, it was gonna be one of these, because those just look incredible. Um, speaking of picking a steak, Scott's gonna come over. He's gonna choose one from each stash that we're gonna cook and grill. What do you think? Ooh. Which one would you have your eye on? Man, those jump out right away, don't they? Here, something we didn't do before you choose is grab grab that second one in. But look at the look at the difference in just the, the firmness of these. Here, why don't we? There you go. There we go. So one you day, can... two week. And six feet. Yep. All right. Now you get to choose. These are going to be going on the grill. Well, I like this one. It works for me. And I like this one. Works for me. And I like this one. Wait, well that that's the third one on that one too. Too. Works yeah, for me. Yeah. You good? Or do yep. you like this one better? Nope. That that's good. So there you have it, one day, two week, 42 day. These are all going to get grilled up and we're gonna put them to the taste test. Go fire up the grill. You've been seeing us feature the dry ager cabinet. Now, the beauty of these is they perfectly hold temperature and humidity with the salt block in there. They do not need any water hookups. This allows us to dry age or you to dry age just about anything. We use it a lot for beef. Um, I encourage you to go to dryagerusa.com. You'll be able to see everything that, be, that can be used in these cabinets. We have the commercial grade, which are NSF rated. You can get your own version, nearly identical to these, just doesn't have the commercial rating, shipped right to your home, and you too can dry age just like the professionals do in your home, dryagerusa.com. Check them out. We know you'll love it. We made it to the grill. 42 day, two week, one day. You can see the tomahawks are all laid out. We thought um, it would be fitting since these are tomahawks, we're gonna use Montana Knife Company's little hatchet, and we're gonna notch one notch in the one day steak, two notches in the two day, two week steak, and we're just gonna do three in the 42 day. That way we can tell these apart when they're on the grill and then they, when they come off the grill. We are then going to wrap the bones in aluminum foil. We're gonna do indirect on, on half of the grill. Um, the grill is lit. I put a couple hickory wood chunks in there so you can see we have some beautiful smoke going. We're also going to cook some asparagus uh, wrapped in bacon for our side. All right, time for some notches with this Montana knife hatchet. We're gonna go there. Just doing one, one notch on this one. There we go. Now let's do two notches on this one. There we go. So there's no confusion. Thanks for the assist. 
on what's what at the end of this hook. Look how discolored that bone is compared to the rest since it was aged. There we go. Now, all notched, ready we to go. We don't need those anymore. So first step, um, we are going to, it, it kills us a little bit that we're not going to pre-season pre -season these steaks. Um, but we feel like for a fair comparison, we need to try them without any seasoning on them. Um, we are going to make a couple little piles after they're cooked and we make slices just to kind of dip it in. Uh, Brock and black is what we're going to use for those little piles. So they're going on the grill unseasoned at the moment. So I'll show you the reason why I'm doing this. And it's because this bone portion is going to be hanging out over the direct flame. So I don't want that bone just cooking to smithereens. Uh, we're doing a reverse sear on these. So as mentioned, we're doing indirect. Uh, and then we'll take them up to about 105 degrees and then we'll go direct right over the, the flame to, to sear them. So this will just help protect that bone while they cook. 250 degree grill temp. You can see I have a half moon in the back of this grill. So that's gonna be our indirect. On the front will be the direct, but uh, right now we're just gonna go indirect. And you can see the meat is gonna be located over top of that heat deflector in the back and the bone is not. So that's why I wrapped it. So we're just gonna go one, two, three. We will be flipping these um, throughout the cook a little bit, but we're gonna try to keep our grill temp low and slow. And we are going to, as mentioned, go up to about 105 degrees internal. And then we're gonna crank our grill temp and we're gonna sear these off to a nice medium rare, probably 120 to 125 degrees. So now we just wait. 25 minutes in, the grill's still pegged at 250 degrees. We're gonna go ahead and flip these steaks. And we will be temping along the way. And when they hit that 105-ish is when we'll start our sear. We're ready to come off. We're somewhere between 103 and 107-ish, about close to 40 minutes in. So we're just gonna pull these off, let them sit here for a second, and then we're gonna open up the top and bottom damper on our grill. And we're gonna get this temperature up to about 500, maybe even a little bit more. And we're gonna sear these off, so. Get everything opened up. And then we'll be back to do the sear. So something I'm gonna do, this is a basket. So I'm gonna lift this whole basket out. It's obviously super hot, so you gotta be careful where you set it. And then I'm gonna put our cast iron grates just down in the grill without that heat deflector in there. So we can get a little bit closer to that fire. We can go in for a real nice sear. All right, we're up to about 550 degrees. This is where you have to be careful. Open it. You can't just fling this open without burping a little bit first because it's just, it's so hot. But we're just gonna go, actually let me find my hottest parts of the grill. And don't forget we do have these notched so we can see what's what. I can already tell that the, the hottest part's right here in the front where that damper was open. So I'm, when I flip these, I'm gonna go, I think I'm gonna go this way with my, the hottest part of my fire is here in the front.
toasty hot. Time to pull these bad boys off. Actually, I'm going to go this way. Woo. Now, I have a quiz for you. Did you keep track of them? No. That's why we marked them. Can, so can, right. you, can you guess right now? Oh, boy. I think this is the dry aged one because it had more fat, so I think it shrunk a little bit more. Um, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say 42 day dry age, two week, and one day. That's what I'm gonna say. Okay. All right. So we're just gonna let these sit here. We're gonna let them. We're gonna let them rest probably at least 10 minutes. Um, we got to get this grill temp down, and then we're gonna start our asparagus. First thing I'm gonna do is season these with some of our Brock Lesnar blend can see bacon wrapped asparagus is incredible and we found that seasoned with the Brock blend makes it even more incredible not that we needed a side for these tomahawk steaks but guess what we weren't gonna say no to bacon wrapped asparagus plus it just makes the plate look good so get them all seasoned up nice get our grill opened up She's still pretty, pretty toasty. So don't forget our tomahawks are resting and we're just gonna go, the back portion of this grill has the heat deflector in it. So we're just gonna go over that heat deflector and we're gonna cook these up so they're nice and crispy and tender while our steaks rest. Asparagus is finished add it to our cutting board and now we can slice everything up see how we did Spencer put me on the spot to see if I could guess which steak was which and I think I guess this one is the dry aged one the 42 day ha bingo got it three notches let's check out this one this one I said it was the two week Mm, we'll see, that might only be one. Nope, that's two. So I was wrong on those two, but I was wrong on this one. I was right on this one. So, so that's that's the one day and that's the two week? Correct. Let me, let me reverse these. Yep. I'm gonna reverse them like that. So now we have 42 day, two week, and one day. Ready for this? I think so. All right. We're gonna put little piles of those, the black and brock, on the cutting board. But first, we're just gonna remove this bone. And don't you worry, we're gonna do some gnawing on that. So get the bones removed. And now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go down through and we're just gonna slice these up. I can smell that dry aged steak. We're just gonna cut the whole way across the steak and then we'll just take a nice big chomp out of it. So I can already tell that this one day steak is tough. I can feel that right away. So the tenderness for sure, that 42 day was way more tender. Um, we do realize that the uh, fat content was different in these steaks. They may taste a little bit different, but <clears throat> what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, which one do you want to start with? I mean, I feel like we got to start with this one and work our way up. I know it's going to be that one in theory should be the best one right I there. I know it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. He said, It's not hateful. Tastes pretty good. And it cooks bland. It cooked different. It cooked, it's it's way more done than these two. That's the biggest thing that jumps out at me is that it's bland. It um, tastes like beef. 
but and obviously none of these have seasoning on them yet. no no seasoning it's um it's not bad it actually not bad. It just kind of reminds me of like your typical restaurant steak yeah if you were getting like no names but like if you if you're going to a steak that didn't necessarily special or excuse me going to a restaurant didn't necessarily specialize in steaks just kind of your run just, of the mill just kind of okay it's kind of what you get now this one is the two week let's try this one much bigger flavor much much bigger flavor yep. More tender by a lot. That one's better. That's what I'm more or less used to. Mm -hmm. I'm just surprised at the cooking. Like the this one, it just seemed to overcook. Yeah, that's weird because it's the exact same thickness. Cooked exact same, same thickness. Same. I mean, maybe a hot spot on the grill, but you can see that one um, is a nice, you know, nice medium. I don't know. All right, now for the piece de restance, the extra enhanced dry age. Look at that. I'm going to eat the fat and everything. Mm. Mm. Notable difference. Cool. Hands down. Butter, caramel, nutty, flavorful. very tender, very tender. Oh man, oh, that's a try a bite of that right there by the That's though. incredible. Oh, that's good. So, that gives me like goosebumps almost. That is absolutely impactful, is probably the best way of saying that. Well, here we got to do this too. Get a little load of that. Bacon wrapped asparagus. Mm. Mm. That Brock seasoning wow. on there. Aging matters. I think that's the biggest thing that we figured can't. out. Biggest thing is, is I can't get over how it cooked. How it cooked different. That is absolutely wild. Like these, I mean, you can see. Um, still has some pink left in it, but this one just, it just all cooked right out, and I don't understand. I pulled them all. Um, I pulled them off the grill at about 118 to 119 degrees, and they did rest here for about 10 minutes. Um, but that one just it, that one cooks so differently. You know what I that's feel the like biggest? That's the biggest thing. It's kind of like a steak that you're eating it, and you're like, I gotta eat my worth. I paid for it, whatever. It's it's okay, but you're also inclined to be like, I'm full, and I'll take it home to my dog. It could be the reason why your average restaurant steak is just okay. Yeah, versus this one, it's like, that's a good steak. Mm -hmm. Like that, that is, I'm proud of myself, the way I cooked it. Um, your dog's not gonna get, your dog's not gonna get any. And then on this steak, you're gonna be like, I'm gonna gnaw the bone. I'm gonna, mm -hmm. I'm gonna, everything that I can. We haven't even tried these with seasoning, but aging is impactful. It makes a big difference just based on what we have here. We did say that we were gonna try some seasoning, so we're just gonna put. Now hold on, I'm vetoing. Oh, you said, we, we didn't I'm feed vetoing. you. No, no, oh, I, that's oh, not what I'm doing. Oh. I'm vetoing. He wants us oh. to hit it with the ranch. I wanted to add that in there. We can hit it with the ranch. Let's we, make can, a, we can do black and brock too, but. Let's make a little pile here. I thought that'd be good. Absolutely. I think at this point, the only thing to do is take this. I feel so bad for you folks at home that you don't get to experience what I'm about to experience right now. Mm. Oh. <laughs> oh, that's my good. Goodness. Here, Spencer. Oh man. Juicy, tender. I cannot wait. Thank you. Bursting with flavor. All these different levels. So you know what I'd that's be curious to see is a one day aged Wagyu steak versus just a regular grain fed Boy. 42 aged day. The challenge there is that you're chopping into a Wagyu steer just to get that steak that'd be, a, that'd be a shame. We could do hanger steak. It might be a good idea for go, another Spencer. video. Oh man, double dip. Spencer was talking about how the, <laughs> the other day <laughs> we were filming 
and he has to chew quietly whenever I hand him or we hand him a sample because otherwise you'll hear him chomping on camera. So he's back there trying to chew as quiet as he possibly can, but uh, we feel bad leaving him out. Very good, very informative for us. Dry aging matters. That 42 day dry age steak, huge, huge results from that. Very pleased with how that turned out. Hope you enjoyed watching the video. Again, Beard of Butchers, follow us on the social media channels, and we will see you next time. Until next time, see ya.